Hey guys, Matt here. Going to get into Hebrews 11 tonight, and we're just going to get into the beginning. I don't know how many of uh, there's 17 characters here in in the uh, in what's called the Faith Hall of Fame, and it's exciting. It's awesome. And here's what's happening: the, the Hebrews. You know, we've we've been over and over that Jesus is more, and and I don't mean to that like it's like it's redundant or not interesting or whatever, but uh, we've already made several points about that. So we get to the end here in chapter 10, and the author says, okay, because of this, because of the fact that Jesus is clearly higher than anyone, he's God, he's the be-all, end-all, he's the best sacrifice, he's the only sacrifice, it's all done. Because of that, you guys need to recall the former days when you first met him. Remember when you were enlightened, you endured a hard struggle and sufferings and and you even had joy when your stuff was getting taken from you your house was being plundered and yet you had joy of course that's a sign of the holy spirit anytime there's there's suffering great suffering and there's great joy that's a sign of a great movement of the holy spirit and some of these guys were were in danger now of of falling away because i look at it as as again, Matthew 13, they were on the way, but they were receiving uh, persecution because of the word, which we see in the parable of the sower, and it was in danger of choking out the seed. So God gives the author license to blast them, to, to get in there and, and, and just start writing this thing and, and hitting them hard. And uh, and it's interesting because all of that is leads to the... the, the only conclusion that it would lead to is faith. What is faith? So we're going to get into that tonight. And, and here's the textbook definition. By the way, this is the only definition in the Word of God about faith. The only definition. Here's what it says. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. For by it, by faith... The people of old received their commendation, received their good testimony, the King James says, I believe. We'll get into that. Verse 3, by faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. So, so faith calls into light things that are invisible. Faith sees things that aren't yet there. Right? Um, that's what faith does. That's what faith is. Faith is, uh, is, is calling to light things that are not yet seen. And we see this for faith is the, the assurance. Faith is the confidence of things hoped for. It isn't like crossing your fingers kind of hope. It's a joyful expectation. It's knowing that he who is faithful, he who promised is faithful, like it says in Hebrews 10.23, he who promised is faithful. God is not a man that he should lie. You know, if he said it, he's going to do it. And and that's the joyful expectation of this hope. And it's it's a conviction of things not seen. It's a deep conviction. It's something that people would die for. And they did. We're going to see that in this next chapter. And the interesting thing about this, the author, inspired by the Holy Spirit, says, okay, I'm going to give you the textbook. Here's the textbook definition. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. That's the definition of faith. But I'm going to show you how faith walks, how faith talks. I'm going to show you what faith looks like with legs, okay? So I'm going to give you 17 people. And an interesting thing happens with these 17 people. Um, I, I call this the antithesis of the prosperity gospel. And I, I don't even, when I first started doing these and stuff, and I, I'd be talking about the prosperity gospel, and, and it's, it's just such garbage. I don't even spend much time on it anymore. But the interesting thing is, and I'm not saying you shouldn't. I just That's just where I'm at. But the interesting thing is here is that I just was thinking, how do the prosperity uh, preachers who are preaching a false gospel how do they broach, how do they, what do they do with Hebrews 11? Because here's the deal, all 17 of these people, they never got the stuff. 
Okay, they were all eternally minded. Abraham, I can't wait to get an Abraham. Abraham was a wealthy, wealthy dude, and he left it all and dwelled in tents for the rest of his life. Okay, how do you how do you preach this if if you're a prosperity preacher? How do you get to verse 20, 11, 20? Actually, I'll I'll do eleven. I'm sorry, eleven thirty six and eleven thirty seven. I'm just going to jump ahead real quick, and then we're going to go through it. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawed in two. Oh, and they were killed by the sword. Now, I'd like to pass around a plate for an offering, right? That wouldn't preach in the prosperity movement, right? That You wouldn't, you wouldn't see that on, on the Christian broadcast network or TVN or whatever, right? Because this is the antithesis of the prosperity gospel. These guys didn't get nothing but their butts whooped and eventually most of them were killed um and here's what the author is saying he's saying hey it's not about comfort it's not about this life it's about the next life and by the way you're gonna be rewarded see faith doesn't look at this world and this life and our stuff faith focuses on the bank account in heaven they faith focuses on eternal things. And that's what the author is doing here. He's showing them, why should you guys be any different? And that's a lesson for us. Why should we think we're any different? And I still need to hear that. I still need to hear it. Because the world still sometimes looks good to me, and I hate that. But this is a fantastic chapter because it calls into light the fact that it ain't about here and it ain't about now. Satan wants us to to love things and cars and houses and money and position and status and sex and feeling good and drinking and whatever. But it ain't about that. And that's what Hebrews 11 is going to teach us. And it's exciting. And, and there's plenty of scriptures that would back that up. That there's suffering and there's a persecution. We see it in, in uh, James 1, 1 through 8. We see it in and one of my favorites is uh, 1 Peter 5 through 10 and he says he says after this after you have after you experience this suffering which by the way is being being endured by your brothers in the world uh, everywhere all the faithful brothers and sisters are going to experience this after you experience it God's going to settle you and he's going to perfect you and he's going to mature you and we see it in in Romans 5 3 through 5 Paul says I glory in tribulation Right? We see it in Colossians 1.24. Uh, it, it's, it's like a privilege to, to be persecuted. It's a privilege to be persecuted for, for Jesus Christ. It's, it's like God sees you faithful to endure this. So, anyways, I'm rambling. That's just a little setup on Hebrews 11. And it's probably going to be several videos, but, but it's going to be good. And when we get into Enoch, we're going to see some good stuff. Can't wait to talk about Rahab. Uh, Abraham's fantastic, Noah, oh, it's going to be great. Stick with me for the next five, six videos. Peace.